Here we go. All right. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone, depending on where you're calling in from. Good morning from Guatemala City. My name is Sarah Sterling. I'm the program catalyst for conveners.org. Um, most of you on this call, I believe, already know a, at least a little bit about our organization and what we do, but I wanted to sort of just give a brief introduction before I pass the mic over to Chris. Um, but this is one of our final installments of our masterclass series. We save the best for last. <laughs> um, and this is a series that we've been doing for the past two slash three years, really in earnest um, this year. Uh, it's a series that we've developed specifically for our entrepreneur support organization, um, members of not only our membership community, but also our entire ecosystem. So these are 90 minute working group sessions, uh, sometimes 60 minutes, 60 to 90 minute working group sessions where we can deep dive into a topic that's really relevant for, um, for ESOs, particularly working with entrepreneurs. Today, we're gonna go over uh, supporting Black BIPOC entrepreneurs through mentorship, um, and Chris will be leading us in that, but just really quickly for those of you who might not have a ton of information about who we are and what we do, um, we're a small but mighty virtual team. We have our core team uh, that's based in several countries, actually, uh, Guatem including the U.S., Guatemala, and Canada, and then we have a suite of consultants that are based um, in the U.S. and elsewhere, including Argentina, uh, Kenya, etc. So, um, and actually Ray's in Germany right now and is going to be hopping to Portugal <laughs> in January because he lives his amazing nomad life. Um, and what do we do? We have uh, work that falls into two buckets. We have an advisory services arm that does one-on-one -on -one consulting projects. So if you're looking for help um, either with ideation or actual implementation or co-design when it comes to a specific event, gathering, convening, or training facilitation series. Uh, we, we've done that with corporations, foundations, and universities uh, currently and in the past. We have many, many years of experience uh, doing that since uh, about 2014. And then we also have a membership community. So this has been a really core feature of our work since the very beginning. Um, we create spaces for purpose-first leaders to come together to ideate, collaborate, um, and, and just network around how do we spark and catalyze sustainable impact throughout the globe by bringing others together into a similar space. So this can look like uh, Impact Accelerator, working with social entrepreneurs, an impact investment fund. Um, it can look like a university program. It can look like philanthropic organization or even uh, leadership coaching training services, uh, digital meetings, digital media storytelling services, or um, just pure event organizing around a specific event. So that's us. I want to quickly introduce our amazing presenter today, Chris Bell, who's Entrepreneur Programs Manager at Seedspot. Um, we have the links there that Colin can share in a second. I don't really love reading off of slides, but I'm just going to pause so you guys can read, since you can probably read faster than I can read it for you. But we're so, so excited to have Chris. Chris and I have known each other for quite a while um, and have done work across different organizations. So we're really excited to have him here to present on this masterclass. We'll be sending a recap email next week as well with a recording and sharing with everyone who RSVP just in case there are some people who RSVP aren't able to make the call today. Um, so we'll be shared with a, a wider audience as well as with everyone on the call. And just in the spirit of these calls to kind of uh, give a preview of what we, what we try to do to set them up, um, we really like this to be as interactive and engaging as possible. This is supposed to be sort of a working group session where Chris will share a lot of his expertise and knowledge, but it's also a space to ideate and do knowledge exchange and transfer as well. So please don't be shy in terms of either putting in the chat or raising your hand digitally, physically, if your camera's on. Um, and I know Chris, let us know if at any point um, for Colin, um, if you want us to pause the recording for the discussion parts and just have the informational parts. I know we've done that in the past. So just, just queue up for Colin because he's your, your man for this, for all of our calls, but also for this call. So I'm going to pause, stop my share, screen share. And I'm going to pass it over to Chris. Thank you so much again for your, your time and investment in our community. Of course, of course. And, and yeah, Colin, um, when we have breakout rooms, I know we have a small but mighty team here. Um, that would probably be the opportunity to pause. So I'll just signal it to you and then we can do that. Um, but thanks again for having me. Um, Sarah kind of gave my intro for me, but it's a pleasure being here with you all. 
Um, it's my first time joining the conveners community. So it's always cool to see people who intentionally show up, you know, on a Wednesday morning on a Zoom call um, to have these intentional talks. So I'll share my screen and we can get kicked off. All right. So thumbs up if you can see the screen. All right. So hopefully my, my computer doesn't go as slow as, as it seems to be going right now. All right. Sorry, one second. Okay, here we go. I have an old Mac. I'm sorry, y'all. <laughs> All right. So as Sarah shared, I'll be talking today with you all about some mentorship um, festivities again, I guess. Um, essentially, what I do on the team as entrepreneur programs manager at Seedspot, um, I'm the triage between both our programs, um, our alumni and the mentors that help serve our programs. Um, and so we know a couple of things about mentorship. Um, things don't always go as planned. Um, but we always try to make sure that we're supporting our BIPOC founders of colors as best as we can, um, because we know that, um, I guess, I don't, I don't want to have any assumptions, but many, most times they're very um, underserved in their ability to kind of get, get access to networks, um, put their name out there and build their confidence to go out there and, and be entrepreneurs and successful entrepreneurs. So we try our best to pair those entrepreneurs with mentors who understand them best and can support them on their journey. But a slight overview of what the presentation will, will um, be composed of is who is Seatspot? Who am I? Why am I talking to you? Um, why do I have any credibility in this space? Um, mentorship breakdown. Um, there are many definitions of a mentor, and I want to uh, break down exactly what I mean when I'm speaking about that. Um, the importance of investing in mentorship and entrepreneurs, um, how to find and secure a mentor. Um, I know a lot of times people um, think that it's very difficult, but I think there's a lot of routes we can take, and it's very easy, especially if you're very open and candid and um, open about what your needs are, especially for the communities that you're serving. I know a lot of people are pretty altruistic in nature and want to give back. So best ways to find and sustain those mentor relationships as well. And then um, I'll step into kind of what we've done and best practices at Seedspot and what we've tried to kind of support our entrepreneurs as well as supporting our mentors too. So another brief overview. So um, I do the mentor management of our network. Um, I also manage our post-program support for the alumni that we serve. Um, we paired over a thousand mentor matches and mentees. Um, and so we've seen a whole gamut of, you know, really great relationships, really great mentor relationships. Then also sometimes, you know, when the pairing isn't always the best, um, we have some stories about that too. Um, I've seen mentors sit on boards. Um, they're on alumni companies as right now. Um, they become recreational sport buddies with entrepreneurs. And so there's a lot of different ways you can utilize mentorship. Um, and I wanna break some of those things down. But also, um, I know Sarah also kind of gave an overview of kind of what we're going to be doing here on Zoom, but I just want to make sure that we're all comfortable using the platform. Um, so find a comfortable spot to sit where you can see, hear, collaborate with others because this will be a bit interactive. Um, but if you do need to, you know, move, stand, salsa dance, do whatever you need to do, feel free to do so. Um, but um, I'll just cover some of the bare, bare minimums and basics here. So the mute button um, to reduce any distractions while in the main room. Um, if you could, please keep your microphone muted. Um, the, uh, the mute button's at the bottom left of the Zoom screen. Um, but for right now, I'll ask that everyone can please unmute and just say hello, just so we know that everyone's button is working and that no one has any difficulties hearing each other. Hello. Right on top of the Pamela. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Hello. Cool, cool, cool. Hello. All right, that's everyone, I think. Thank you. Um, so video as well. So I don't know if you all have been in this position where you're presenting to people. It's In the virtual world, it's quite different. And I don't know if you've ever just been staring at blank screens the entire time. It's not the most fun experience, but if you could, um, I think human connection is super important virtually. So if you could keep it, your camera on, I understand things are happening. Um, we would love to see your smiles, your yawns, your furrowed brows, all of, all of it. We just really want this to be interactive. Um, so you feel present with us here, but no pressure, no pressure. Um, um, the chat feature. So I realize that people are calling it from all over. So um, I know you see the chat button down there. So if you could just use it and tell us where you're 
you're calling in from. Um, again, just trying to, to make sure that everyone's chat function and feature is working and another way to kind of see who's in the room. I'll do it myself. I don't know if anyone's ever been here before, but I'm in Minneapolis. Perfect, Sarah. <laughs> well, cool, cool, cool. It is cold here. It's cold. It's very cold. The, the leaves are turning. Um, but cool, that's working on um, the reaction. So I know there's um, another feature down there. You can use emojis, you can raise your hand. Um, so if you could use that feature right now, for example, um, being an entrepreneur is challenging, but yet so rewarding. If you agree, um, give me an emoji. And I can see it on your screen, I think. There we go. Bunch of thumbs up. Perfect, perfect. And then the last thing we'll be talking about and we're using is the breakout room. So um, this will be our most used tool of the day. Um, and breakout rooms are a great way to have in-depth conversations. And I know we have a smaller group, so it'll probably just be you and one other buddy. Um, but when the time comes on your screen, you will see an invitation to join a breakout room. Um, so please accept that and introduce yourself to your new friends. Um, and that's how we'll use that feature. And they'll be coming, one be coming up right after this, um, actually. So if at any time you need to stretch, eat, use the restroom, take a call, hug your kids, pet your dog, please do so. Um, I know we have about an hour and a half, so I understand if things come up. And thank you for doing that exercise with me. I know it's not always the, the most fun experience, but we have breakout rooms coming up. So I have a question for you all, or a few questions rather. Um, what does mentorship mean to you? Um, who have been some instrumental mentors in your life? whether it be personal or professional. And so I'll give us about six, six or seven minutes just to discuss in our breakout rooms. And this is just trying to, um, again, get us to be more comfortable talking with one another, introduce ourselves um, to each other, and then also kind of get a feeling for um, what our experiences have been with mentorship and how that may inform how we think about mentorship for the communities that we serve or the communities that we're convening. So give me one moment while I set up the breakout rooms. And I guess, Colin, you can pause here. If somebody wants to volunteer, um, I would love to hear what you all shared or um, an experience where you experienced mentorship that was either you know, personal or professional and how it kind of helped and guided you. Sure, let me, though, uh, Chris, we weren't able to really deep dive into these questions. Uh, uh, we started off uh, basically introducing ourselves and, you know, our agenda or reason for both of us to be on this call. And uh, I, primarily from my side, I was uh, talking to Pamela about what I think of mentorship is how I think of it more of a safe space to bounce off ideas rather than more of a transactional relationship. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, uh, and all throughout my career, I guess my mentors have helped me uh, look into my blind, blind spots. Uh, and, you know, th these were the people irrespective of how conversations went. They were there uh, standing by me, questioning my judgments or, you know, decisions. So that's how uh, mentors have been helpful in my career. And uh, I guess Pamela is still, you know, she was sh uh, sharing a couple of her thoughts, but she was trying to explain to me both from a mentor and a mentee perspective, and maybe she wants to take it forward from here? Um, I would be happy to. Um, so from my perspective, I feel like uh, these relationships are more important now than ever because I feel like this particular elder generation that's on the planet right now uh, have been, have lived through just an amazingly revolutionary and transformational period in terms of um, entrepreneurship, business, I mean, everything has radically changed in the last 20 years. And the people who've lived through that change, I feel many of them don't necessarily write. And they're, you know, a lot of entrepreneurs are in small businesses. They don't necessarily share their wisdom with others. And I just feel like, particularly now when they're, are not necessarily a lot of spaces for people to share their wisdom. Having a, men, 
T mentor relationship is a great way to do that wisdom transfer. Absolutely. And, you know, someone's lived experience can be embedded in that next generation. And in that way, you know, that legacy continues. And in, from my perspective, I can't say that I've ever had a formal mentor relationship, but the people that have mentored me um, have done so just, uh, passionately, religiously, relentlessly, and not because we were put together, but because we had some shared, mm -hmm. um, shared intention. And these people put everything they had into me. And I feel I could, I, you know, some of them are not with us now. They are ancestors and I feel them with me all the time. And uh, I think that the ability to do that to share so deeply with someone that you continue to impact them beyond the time you're on the planet is, is a powerful thing. And I think more of us should be able to experience that. And I think when we used to live in villages, this would happen because it was embedded in the culture. So these are types of relationships that are not necessarily embedded in our Western culture. And I think that what you're doing here can help us reweave those broken connections. Well, I love that, Pamela. Thank you so much. <laughs> um, keep this thread of um, thought in terms of mentorship um, as throughout this presentation, because what I'm going to jump into next is just a little bit more about T-Spot, but we're going to come right back to that impact of mentorship and what that means, you know, for the entrepreneurs or the communities that we're all serving um, and how, like you said, how vital those relationships can, can be to kind of accelerating our growth, whether it be personal or professional. And for entrepreneurs, I think it's always um, a, a mix of both, um, both, you know, growth as, as for themselves as entrepreneurs, but as well as their businesses or whatever they're cultivating or building too. So uh, thank you all for sharing and participating in that breakout room. So um, who is Seedspot? So we are a national and due to the pandemic, we went virtual. So now we are a global um, business accelerator and social impact incubator. Um, our mission is to educate, accelerate, and invest in entrepreneurs who are creating solutions to social problems. Um, we support our entrepreneurs in a few different ways um, and through a few different programs. So we have a two-day launch camp, which is for our idea stage entrepreneurs, um, people who are trying to get their things off the ground and need a couple of um, tips and tricks here to build into a sustainable business. We have a six week impact accelerator, which is for companies who are a little bit more um, involved and developed and are looking to scale. Um, but we also provide post program support um, and provide our community with resources. And so that's kind of my job on the team is to, to manage our relationships with our alumni and making sure that they feel like they can always come back to us as they continue to build and grow um, their communities that they're serving. Um, our vision is to be the largest home for determined dreamers across the globe um, who are ready to take the next step in translating their idea into reality or preparing their ventures to make a leap forward. So, in fact, one of the few silver linings of the pandemic was our ability to reach many more entrepreneurs through our programs. Um, and today we've supported founders across 38 different countries. Um, mentor, uh, I would say our, our testimonials from our alumni is that, you know, we, generate, we help them generate revenue faster, raise more capital, um, create more impact um, by surrounding them with a community of resources and service providers, as I just shared, um, access to markets and investors, but most importantly, mentorship, which is what we're here to talk about today. Um, to date, we've worked with over 2,500 founders, um, most of them being paired with some type of mentorship, whether it's been one-to-one, -one, um, ad hoc, or a case-by-case -case basis, or otherwise. Um, and we're committed to serving these underrepresented entrepreneurs um, who have historically been marginalized in the entrepreneurial ecosystem um, as they face higher barriers to launching a business. Um, one of, of those entrepreneurs, I would say 72% have been from underrepresented communities and well over half are women. Um, and collectively, they have created over 3,000 jobs, generated over $161 million in revenue um, and raised nearly $80 million in capital. Um, fun fact, our impact report is about to release soon, so keep an eye out for that, but um, we anchor our impact in the UN Sustainable Development Goals um, and break them into five impact focus areas, as shown here. Um, this is an important part of how we vet and select our ventures for our programs, and each venture must make a compelling case for why their solution aligns with or advances one of or more of these impact areas. Um, 
And then when we work with entrepreneurs, we serve to map and measure the impact they're creating in their local communities to, to global outcomes centered around equality, economic opportunity, environmental sustainability, global health, wellness, education. These are all kind of um, the impact areas and the sustainable development goals, but those are some of the main ones that we tend to serve. Um, and across those impact areas, our ventures have impacted over 10 million lives um, to date. So quite a bit of reach um, and quite a bit of, I would say, involvement from our mentors because these entrepreneurs didn't do it alone. And I would say, in my own opinion, that they were able to do so much because they had access to networks of mentorships or investors or people who had been in their corner um, to kind of support them because being an entrepreneur is hard, building community is hard, um, and we all need support. So mentorship, let's break it down. What, what am I talking about? Um, so you all kind of just, I know Pamela was talking about mentors who are, have been in her network who haven't necessarily been formal, but more so personal, um, maybe family and friends, and they've aided her in her corner. But I want to talk about just a few, a few terms just so we can be clear about what we're talking about and what I'm talking about when we're speaking about mentorship. So, you know, we have the consultant. So the short term, most of the time you're paying them. Um, they have a very specific expertise and area of focus, um, and they do the work for you. So what I call them are, you know, the hired assassins. They're here to get the job done. Um, you're hiring them, you're paying them. They're not working for free. Um, slightly different than a mentor. You have a coach. So a coach is focused on you, um, sometimes more holistically um, about you and um, they're more focused on your professional development. Uh, oh, sorry, not more on your professional development, more focused on you than your professional development. So um, this could also be a short-term engagement, but a lot of times I know um, from myself personally, I've had coaches who have kind of aided me in my development from you know high school, middle school to college to where I am in now. Um, and again, they're focusing on you um, and they ask the right questions and help you start thinking about things that maybe you haven't thought about in the past. Um, but then we have a mentor. So. Mentors can be long term, they can be short term, um, not necessarily paid. Sometimes they can be paid, but not not frequently. Um, they have an industry focus, I would say. Um, they check the intangibles. Um, they can hold many different roles and they steer you in the right direction, but they let you still captain your own ship, if that makes sense. They have they help with that high level gut check. Um, some of those intangibles that maybe you're not necessarily thinking about or some of the experiences that they can bring to the table that you haven't quite gotten to quite yet. Um, so there's a difference between a formal and the informal mentor. So as Pamela shared, she's had informal mentors in her life. So, you know, personal network, people from your family, most of the time they're free. Um, maybe in the case of an entrepreneur, they're a previous founder with industry experience or have been in your corner. But the formal network or the formal mentor, um, you know, could be a board member, someone who that you find from an accelerator program like Seedspot or Convener, um, you know, Sometimes they have skin in the game. They're, they're focused on your development, but also the development of your business or the community that you're building. And they really wanna see you succeed, um, but may not necessarily be as focused on um, you as the person, but more so what you are building together and what they can give back to you. Um, they're well-connected and they can open other doors for you too and are really a game changer for you. Um, but why is more mentorship is important? Why is it, why is it important? Why, does, why should we care? Um, for me, I would say mentorship is not a nice to have, but a must have, um, and I'll, I'll explain it here. So um, according to this Kauffman Foundation study, um, as it pertains to entrepreneurship and starting a business outside of access to funding and capital, um, access to networks and connections, i.e. mentorship is a top three challenge that many as aspiring entrepreneurs face. So those idea states, entrepreneurs who haven't necessarily done it before and are looking to kind of take their first the first step into entrepreneurship. Um, and addressing these challenges um, for our, these aspiring entrepreneurs to be a, a key priority for us as entrepreneur support organizations. Um, you can also see um, self-doubt and fear and lack, lack of information and knowledge as other challenges, challenges that I believe mentorship oftentimes seeks to assist with. Um, so sharing common experiences, lessons learned, helping the next person potentially step over the mistakes that that mentor may have made in their past as well. Um, studies show that, you know, mentorship is proven to aid in your business. So from this study from TechCrunch, a startup is three times more likely to succeed if mentored. Um, and mentors are really that secret weapon for your startup. So 93% of startups um, admit that mentorship has been instrumental to their success from Sage. 
And so if there's something there's something in the sauce there that mentorship helps you get to that next stage of your journey, whatever stage you started at, it can help you take it to the next level. Um, so as I shared, more likely you're more likely to succeed with a mentor as proven by research. Um, you get to learn from the failure of others. Ultimately, you're trying to avoid failure as an entrepreneur or just in general. And what better way to do that than to learn from a mentor that's been there before and done that. Um, you get to gain experience that's not shared in textbooks. So there are situations that arise in business that might not be solved by case study. Um, intuition speaks loud and experience helps. Mentors ensure that you're thinking of all perspectives. So as entrepreneurs, um, it's easy to get bogged down by the day to day and nitty gritty, but it's important to come up um, and look at a high level strategy, you know, take your come up for air and, you know, get out of the smog. Um, a mentor helps bring those perspectives um, that you might not think otherwise of. And then lastly, networking opportunities. So a, a good mentor opens other doors for you. So a mentor can open doors, create introductions, help increase the, your goals of the company and your access to knowledge as well. So um, it's important to note that also um, that um, entrepreneurs from different stages and different levels face different challenges um, and need different levels of support. So as example here from that same Kaufman study, aspiring entrepreneurs have similar but slightly different challenges and needs than established entrepreneurs. So in other words, an idea stage entrepreneur trying to get their venture off the ground shows a bit of a different journey than an entrepreneur that's been working on their startup for a few years and is looking to scale. Um, access to networks, connections, and mentorship might be a, a bit more essential to that entrepreneur that's just starting versus the entrepreneur who's been in the field for a bit longer. And as entrepreneur support organizations, it's our responsibility, again, to find and provide mentors that can help at both stages of that, of that trajectory. So mentorship and networks assist in the development of both the business and the entrepreneur. So another breakout room for you all. I know it's come soon, but I want to make sure that we have some conversation around this. So when you look at what the work that you're doing in the communities that you're, serv that you're serving, um, whether it be entrepreneurs or otherwise, um, what trends or challenges have you noticed within your entrepreneurs or your organization? Um, how do you think mentorship can aid in these challenges? So again, I'll flip the breakout room so you're not with the same person. Um, but I really want us to take a chance to discuss this and think about, think critically about the work that we're doing. So um, I'll give about, I'll do another six minute round rotation. And I think that's enough time. Um, then we can come back and share out. Um, but let me get this together right now for the breakout rooms. Colin, if you would pause at the, the importance of mentorship. Um, you're probably now thinking, well, Chris, how do I find a mentor? Um, so I'm going to talk about some routes that we've taken at C-Spot, um, but first let's determine who and what we're looking for. So there are many routes to finding a mentor, but there are some things that you need to take into account before you go on your search. So for example, if you serve tech companies or tech entrepreneurs and have all the technical knowledge needed, but need more experience in the marketing or branding side, social media campaign mastermind, so to say, um, you need to be more intentional about the goals you're aiming to achieve and who can best get you there. In contrast, you know, if you're serving largely non-technical founders and they typically need assistance with the development or prototype of their product, that's a different type of mentor that you might be looking for as well. Um, and these are some questions that you really should ask yourself before going on your search. Um, so now what are your organization's goals for the next two, three months? So for us at C-Spot, we have, you know, six week long programs. We have a two day launch camp, which is exactly what it sounds like, 48 hours. And so what type of mentors can we sustain for those interactions? Do we have mentors who are open to staying with us and with mentor or with entrepreneurs for six weeks at a time? Um, do we have mentors who really like to just pop in, in and out for, you know, a pitch competition or, you know, a pitch coaching session that you know, will maybe take an hour and a half? You need to be intentional in your asks when you're recruiting mentors and tell them up front what they're getting themselves into. That way, there's not any disappointment on, you know, the organizational side, but also for your, you know, entrepreneurs when, you, you know, you're putting them into contact with those mentors that they have a, a mutual understanding of what this engagement will be. Um, you know, who do you look, look up to? Um, who's doing it well? So you can also take inspiration from other organizations, other accelerators, other people who have mentor programs and see what they're doing well and implement that into the things that you're doing at your organization too. Um, but I think the biggest key um, is this last question. So what type of mentor personalities do you need in the time commitment? So, you know, do you want best friend type of mentors, people who can 
you know, really handhold and walk the entrepreneurs through this journey? Um, do you want an inspirational teacher, someone who can, you know, just teach them the ropes and let them kind of go on their own and learn on their, their own accord? Um, do you need a no-nonsense boss, someone, you, you know, you have an entrepreneur who is, I won't call them like a know-it-all, but they know what they know and they're going to let you know what they know. But do you need to put them with someone who is also similar to that personality type or do you need to give them someone who's going to tell it like it is, tell them their shortcomings, tell them where they have opportunities to improve? Um, these are all questions that you really should sit with and see how you're determining who you're pairing your mentors with and um, making sure that the experience is great. Um, and so I know for me, I like to always say that our mentors are there to be cheerleaders. So entrepreneurship is a very, um, it's a rough journey for some, and it can be very um, daunting to get back into the game. And so we like our mentors to know that, you know, we really just want you to be a thought partner at minimum, you know, either be in their corner, dust them off when they, you know, when they get down and throw them back in the game. Um, and so again, just being upfront from the top about what you're expecting out of your mentors and having that be communicated so they, they, they don't have any mixed expectations. Um, but leverage your network. Um, so these are some different places that you can go to find um, some, some mentors. And LinkedIn is, I think, one of my favorites. So put all those LinkedIn con connections to, to the test and leverage your network from an organizational standpoint. So your friends, your family, for, um, former or current colleagues, um, customers, strategic partners, Everyone in your organization's network is someone who could potentially be your next mentor or coach, of course, with some vetting and, you know, not just saying anybody and everyone can come come with us, but you obviously have to train them. But take this time to not only recruit the mentors that may or may not be familiar with your organization, but use it as an opportunity to refine how you articulate your organizations, um, the communities you serve and your value proposition um, and other things that could possibly help you stand out as well, because this is a good exercise in communicating who you are to the mentors and why they should join your network and be a resource for you. Um, it may be hard, but um, I found that being vulnerable in these conversations about your barriers, your organizations, your organization's barriers, the the challenges that your entrepreneurs are facing. Um, a lot of people will just open their networks to you once they, they've seen that alignment and see how they can be useful and valuable to you. For example, okay. yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry, I, I had a question on the prior slide, but I don't mean to interrupt you midstream. Um, we can go, what, what's up? Oh, can you just go back one slide? Yeah. So I, I think this kind of gets the heart of like why I wanted to attend this call is, it seems like the approach you're recommending is really just ask the organizations, you know, what kind of mentorship do they need and what what kind of personality. They need. I guess I guess my I have two questions around that. One is, do you think people really know? <laughs> like, what has your experience been with people honestly knowing what they're bad at? You know, because sometimes I find that people are like, well, I want to work on this, but it's not mm -hmm. where they really need help, and you know, they don't always know what kind of personality they need. You know, they want people like them, but and then I guess my my follow up question is, is I, I'm a, the, the assumption I, I, I assume you're, you're doing is that then you're like sort of hand matching people based on what they say. And I, and I guess I was also curious, and maybe you're going to get into this is like, just to double click on that a little bit, because it seems yeah. like there's these two models. Um, yeah, I think so from the, the perspective of, let's say, you know, you're the organization and entrepreneurs coming to you saying, these are my strengths, these are my weaknesses, this is what I'm searching for in a mentor. Um, the things that I've done um, in the past is kind of we have a main mentor, so someone that I have a good relationship, someone whose capabilities I'm, I'm um, comfortable with and I know how they can support this entrepreneur. Maybe this entrepreneur doesn't exactly see it. It's not as clear about how this mentor can fit with them, but I pair them with that main mentor, but I give them a supplemental mentor as well. So someone who they've reached out to me and said, you know, these are my short, this, these are my shortcomings. This is specifically where I want my mentor to be. Um, mm -hmm. I can pair them with that for that specific ad hoc, you know, need, but they have a main mentor who I know, who I have a relationship with can support them in all different facets, but it's on that entrepreneur mm -hmm. to kind of explore with that mentor and kind of ask the right questions and see how, you know, how they can develop that relationship. Because um, when I first started at SeatSpot, I think I struggled in terms of wanting every relationship to go right and knowing that I had to release control because I can't, I can't build the relationship for them. And that's the most tricky part is you, you knowing how and seeing how two people can probably mesh, but it's the work that has to be done by the entrepreneur and that mentor. And again, if they don't have the right personalities, if it, if it doesn't mesh, you kind of just have to let that be. But 
you've done your best and you've done your part in kind of at least connecting them and providing that access to both of them. Um, and they really have to do the work themselves. And so um, I think that that two mentor approach has worked best for me, especially mm. like you said, when entrepreneurs think they know what they need, but they're really asking for something else. Um, I just try my best to be a little bit sly and kind of sliding them a second mentor to say, how about you explore with this mentor too about some of the questions that you might be thinking about and get back to me and then we can we can follow up and see if it's not a good fit and we can pair you with somebody else. And so um, hopefully, hopefully um, that's a bit helpful for you, um, but I know it, it can be it can be challenging for sure. No, that's right. Can I ask a follow up question? Um, yeah. Okay, let me know if I'm taking up too much space here. No, so, you're good. So, so you're you're asking these questions, the entrepreneur. Are you uh, just to get into the process a little bit more? You're asking these questions, the entrepreneur. Are they, is that form they're filling out? Are you asking them live? Yeah. And then you're ta- and then you, it sounds like you're taking the data back and you're personally matching. I'm just curious, like, so yeah. how much time that takes on your side to do all that? Yeah, that's the <laughs> that's the other thing. It is time intensive, but um, these are human beings we're talking about, you know. So okay. I think what we do is, you know let's say it's for our impact accelerator program. So it's a six week program. We have curriculum. We focus on different areas every week. Um, so this entrepreneur is at, you know, they're pre-revenue and they have goals in two to three months to be at a certain place. And so we send out a survey and saying, cool, what are these goals that you're aiming to get in the next two to three months? Because you'll be with us for six weeks. Um, what skills or areas or, you know, focus areas would you like your mentor to have, you know, experience in? Um, and then is there any, you know, any ex, you know, any extra areas maybe that we don't know or that are, that isn't obvious about the business type that you have or the communities that you're serving that we can do to support you. And then I take all that information um, and then, you know, do my best to kind of pair those requests with the skills and expertise that our mentors have and then kind of match them in that way and send them on their way. But I always make sure to keep, let them know that I'm always going to be in their corner as a resource. And again, if the relationship isn't going as you would have expected, if, you know, if there's anything that comes up, let me know. And we can always kind of pair you with another mentor because, um, you know, we're not life, you're not paired together forever. Um, and this could just be a one time to two time interaction where you get what you need and leave what you don't. Um, and then you can pair you with somebody else. And so always keeping the invitation open. Um, is the thing that I try to do the best. But with that, I know a lot of times entrepreneurs don't always take me up on that offer. And so again, I, I can only do so much. So that's really helpful. Thank you. Of course, of course. Thanks for the questions. Um, so going back to kind of where you're finding these mentors, um, I think link- LinkedIn is a great place, a great place to start. But again, realize that LinkedIn um, is a very messy and busy place too. So don't get you know, um, flush it if you don't get responses, if people aren't as forthcoming on LinkedIn because you have to put yourself in in their shoes. Um, A lot of people are doing business development, taking leads on on LinkedIn. And so they can always get back to you. Um, For Crunchbase, I would say it's another resource too if you wanna do a bit of uh, market research, for for instance. So Crunchbase has, you know, networks of mentors and investors and it shares and tells you who and, you know, who they've been involved with in the past what types of companies they've invested with um, in the past. You can kind of help entrepreneurs kind of think about their valuations and comparing themselves to the types of businesses that these mentors have invested in the past. And so it's really a good level set for you to kind of be informed about what areas you want your mentors to be in, what needs your entrepreneurs have. Um, and that's a really great re- resource that I've used. Um, and then of course, um, it's a little bit difficult now. Um, so this is why I have industry meetups, networking events, and volunteering events. You know, people in diff- depending on what state, what country you're in, um, are becoming a little bit more involved in in-person events again. Um, and so prior to the pandemic, this was a really great resource for us to find new mentors. So um, for example, in the DC area, if you know, um, we had a, a entrepreneur meetup where we just had a content expert talk about um, legal one-on-one, we invited, you know, outside external forces or people into those engagements as well. And that was a great place to know who's interested in social entrepreneurship if they're not directly involved in our programs. And, you know, putting a bug in there like, hey, if you wanna help out, um, we have other opportunities for you to mentor, for you to volunteer. Um, And so I think that's another way um, to kind of build up your network um, and your organization's network is by, it's sometimes it's uncomfortable in this virtual space by, you know, 
attending a virtual meetup or attending a virtual networking event, but it's really a great place for you to meet like-minded people. And again, people who are taking the time out of their day to sit on a computer screen, you know, after work to kind of just engage with the community of folks. Um, I think you will have a, a good amount of luck engaging and recruiting mentors from those types of engagements because you can already exceed by example that they're they're generous with their time. Um, they're curious individuals and want to learn and want to connect. And so um, why not, again, extend the invite to potentially be a mentor for your types of organizations. Um, and then lastly, social media. And so I got these from our entrepreneurs because our entrepreneurs are very gritty. Um, but Lunch Club, I don't know if you've heard of Lunch Club or Clubhouse, but these other social media apps um, where people are able to kind of just give their expertise um, pretty candidly and openly are another place and platform to meet um, mentors. Um, unfortunately, since virtual virtual world and social media is so um, so large now, you don't necessarily know where they'll be in the world. And so, um, for example, when we try to pair our mentors with our mentees, we try to match them with people who are kind of in their general vicinity, but the virtual world makes it hard where they may only be able to meet via phone call or Zoom. And so it makes it a little bit difficult in that, right, where they can't necessarily, you know, sit down for a coffee and just, you know, chat it up and decompress in that way. But um, that's the way of the future, it seems. So um, some, some, some place to find formal networks. So these are some other um, favorites of mine. So SCORE. Um, SCORE is a really big um, proponent of giving free volunteer-based mentoring. And so I would say if you go to SCORE, you can talk about specific needs that your, your mentor or your entrepreneurs have, um, the challenges that they're facing, and they do their best to pair and find you free mentors who have volunteered their time to assist with those programs. And, you know, if you strike up a good relationship with them, um, you can just kind of, you know, take them on as your own mentor because SCORE is volunteer-based, is not paying or anything like that. So um, free for all. There's other, um, there's Micro Mentor. Um, as well, which is the world's largest community of entrepreneurs and volunteer business mentors. And then, um, as I shared before, like C-Spot has an accelerator program and a mentor, mentor program. Other accelerators and incubators who have entrepreneurs or are serving social entrepreneurs also have mentor programs. And so if you have good relationships with other partners or other people in the ecosystem, reach out, say, you know, hey, I have an entrepreneur who has this need. Might you have a mentor who, you know, has, has experience in this area as well? And can we, you know, potentially add them to our network? I think it's very open. I'm very open to sharing our mentors. Um, our mentors are always open to meeting new people and expanding the network as well. So don't think of other ecosystem players as competitors, but more so we're all in this together, sharing the same types of um, challenges and serving the same community. So reach out and those are always great resources for boosting up your mentor network. Um, so I have, this kind of exercise for us to do. Um, and I know I, I, maybe we'll take a poll on if you want to rather do it on the, this community call altogether, or if you want to be thrown into breakout rooms where you have some time to think about it, but essentially create a mentor wish list. So, you know, you have your goals, whether it be programmatic, whether it be for the entrepreneurs or the skill, skills based needs that they have, um, write those goals down and who, what those goals are and what you're trying to do. Um, the partner organization. So is there any organization that can help you do those things? Is there, um, you know, is there a, a company that you, that has gone through a program of yours already that you think can help assist this entrepreneur that's at this current stage? Um, and then what do you need? What's the ask? How would you go about making that ask? How can you ask to make these goals a reality? So I want us to spend some time um, to just think about, again, critically, how um, we're going about thinking about the goals of our entrepreneurs, or our organizations, how we're thinking about garnering strategic partners, whether those be, again, mentors or other organizations or companies, and then how are we going about making that ask and making sure that our needs are communicated in a way in which that mentor or organization understands and can help us achieve that goal. So I'll look at the, the screen right now. Um, and if you would want to go into a breakout room, just raise your hand and we can send you into a breakout room, but if you would want it to be uh, kind of just a on the call kind of discussion, we can do that too. So um, I'll do the first one. Do you, who wants to do breakout rooms? I'm sure it's a small group. I think it's better for us to share our thoughts here than this call, Chris. Okay, well, cool. And uh, I don't mean to hijack your agenda, uh, but I have a quick comment if, yeah. if I'm 
Um, based on hearing people speak here, looks like most of us or all of us are more on the um, convening organization perspective where we are working on roles where we convene a mentor and a mentee mm -hmm. rather than being a mentee ourselves or a mentor ourselves. So that being said, you know, the, the burning question I have is based on your experience, what do you think is your biggest problem? Is it finding mentors or is it making that mentor-mentee relationship work if you have to choose one? Yeah, um, I wouldn't say I have a problem finding mentors per se. But I would say my biggest challenge is being in the virtual world. Um, we have a lot of pitch events, for instance, and um, we have a lot of no call, no shows, if that makes sense. So people who said they're going to be there have, you know, accepted the calendar invites, have said, yep, I'll be there. And then at the last minute, you kind of get like a extraneous kind of excuse or kind of um, a reason why they can't join or um, they just don't show. And so that can be a letdown for an entrepreneur that was expecting to meet with that mentor when it hasn't been, you know, specifically a one-to-one -one pairing. Um, and so that's definitely something that we've come across quite a bit in this virtual setting. Um, but in terms of, again, going back to kind of the earlier discussion that we had about making sure that those relationships are fruitful uh, between the mentor and the mentee, I try my best to just take a step back now because when you get too involved, it can feel pretty prescriptive too. Um, and I vet all of our mentors. I trust all of the mentors that we have in our network and they know what they need to do to kind of help an entrepreneur along their path. Um, but a lot of times is again, it's the entrepreneur building up that confidence to be able to say what they need. And then just, you know, how do you sustain a virtual relationship in a way you know you're, you're meeting someone over the call um, for the first time and you know I give my tips and tricks on you know set up recurring meetings always at the same time you know um, maybe send a handwritten thank you or a gift like that to kind of show like the human interaction piece and really build the relationship you really have to go to the foundation of what a relationship is and it can't just be this exchange of information and just a grab and thank you and I'm going to go on my way because I don't think that's how you build sustainable relationships, regardless of it's platonic, romantic, you know, personal, professional. And so I always just trying to retrain and reframe the conversation that this is an actual human being that you're speaking to that has, you know, things that you need and want. But what other things could you add to the conversation to kind of make it feel more organic and natural and that it's not very, um, again, prescriptive of sorts. So. Thank you for sharing that. Of course, of course. Um, I'm, I'm going to jump in because uh, as well. Um, yeah. your, your, your kind of two comments there um, uh, kind of merge into a kind of follow up question on that front. So, so you have on one hand, you know, certainly mentors that um, are not are, are, are kind of not always, let's say, reliable, right? But um, you know, in the end, you know, if you're if a lot of times if you're tapping kind of senior folks and, uh, you know, folks that are kind of building their own <laughs> enterprises, mm -hmm. uh, it's like a Fabergé egg, right? Like you want to make sure that they stay engaged, um, you know, um, and you don't want to overtap them. Yep. Um, so how do you kind of walk, walk that balance there, right? So that, so that um, they, they stay engaged beyond, you know, maybe this one, this, this one um, relationship, right? Mm -hmm. but, um, but, but towards the kind of, um, uh, towards the future of whatever your programming is. Yeah, um, I think, I've tried two things. And so not making the mentor feel guilty per se, but, you know, pairing them one-to-one -one with someone makes them feel responsible for that relationship. Um, and so in terms of like no shows or not staying engaged, um, at least they are owed that kind of time to one person. Um, secondly, I know for seed spot you know we have our internal program so the two-day launch camp the impact accelerator but 
we have a lot of strategic partners and strategic um, initiatives that we assist with as well. And so um, think about it as like when you get into the routine of something. So, you know, we've had mentors on network for years and they know what our home, our home programs are like, like the back of their hand. And sometimes they can get a little bit routine, a little bit casual in their interactions. But when you kind of throw a, you know, a jazzy new opportunity out there working with a different client or a strategic partner or a different community of entrepreneurs, I think sometimes that reinvigorates their passion to kind of come back and kind of also tap their own skills to kind of refresh or dust off things that maybe they haven't done in the past. So for example, if for our home programs, we have a two day launch camp, which is working with entrepreneurs who are brand spanking new into entrepreneurship and are just learning how to tell and craft their story and their pitch. There's people who love showing up to that because they know they can be valuable, but there's mentors who are a little bit more senior, a little bit more, um, ad hoc and specialize in their skills. And when you throw an opportunity like, hey, we need a financial expert to come work on these numbers or pricing, um, being a little bit more specific in that ask too, I found that can sometimes get somebody's more attention because it doesn't feel like um, we're just sending out a general invitation to join for a, a program that they've, assert, they've assisted with in the past. And they can kind of, again, um, dust off their chops and kind of get back in the game and kind of test out um, a new approach as well. So those two things have worked for me in terms of trying to um, get those higher C-level suite folks, um, because I think they, they're they also seeing your ability to see that, you know, I have other areas that I can work, assist in and I don't just need to work with entrepreneurs who are just working on pitches or, um, you know, those, those bare foundational tools that every entrepreneur needs. And so, um, yeah, those are some of the tips and tricks that I would I could share. Oh, cool. I think what I'll do, I'll make an executive decision that since we just kind of answer some questions, we'll just skip over this wish list. But I would think keep this framework because um, this this works for me. Always centering around the goals and the entrepreneurs that we have, or the programs that we need, or that we have, and then what partners can help us get there. Um, what strategic individuals and skills could help us get there. And then how am I crafting my ask? Is it clear from this, this email, from this call, from this message, what I'm asking for? Am I being open? Am I being you know, vulnerable in this ask? Am I being specific? Um, and that tends to work best for me to kind of just think of, think of what, I'm, what I'm asking for rather than just assuming that mentors are going to show up just because I'm a part of an organization called C-SPOT and I work with social entrepreneurs. So really have to kind of sell um, what you're doing to the mentor to kind of get them engaged as well. Um, some of the key considerations also that I ask are um, some of the, the questions that we talk about with our founders of color. So um, does this person truly understand the challenges unique to our community? You know, will they push our entrepreneurs to grow? Um, do I want them temporarily, sporadically, episodically, long term? You know, again, being candid and upfront about that. Um, I think time is always um, very important. The time commitment when you're asking a mentor anyone new to join your organization, being clear on how long the engagement will take, what you need them for is also a very, uh, a best practice that I've used. Um, and these are just some questions and considerations that I use because our founders of color, a lot of times um, share that they want someone who can understand their perspectives and kind of the, their, life, their lived experiences. And sometimes it's challenging to, to match that 100%. Um, but these are all of the questions and considerations I take into account when bringing a new mentor into the network. So just because I've reached out and they've responded to me doesn't necessarily mean that they're automatically going to be a mentor in our network if they don't hit or if they can't answer any of these questions and if there's no purpose um, for them being there. So I'll skip the breakout rooms. Let's get this over too. So how do you keep a mentor? So C-SPOT, we have over 450 mentors in our network. There's quite a few um, and you kind of have to do some work to keep them engaged and make sure that they, um, they want to come back. Um, and some, these are the, some things that I can kind of give to you. So mentors want to know what they're getting themselves into. Um, it's imperative that you not only set, but co-create clear expectations and desired outcomes from the start. So I know we've all heard of SMART goals, um, but I'll 
kind of focus more so on that time bound piece. I think again, time is at the utmost, utmost important at this in this in this virtual world that we're in. You know, a lot of times um, the programs that we have are during the workday when other mentors have you know their own nine to five or businesses that they're working on. So making sure you're clear and maybe over overcompensate telling them about the time commitment um, is a, a definitely a best practice. Um, but also you can frame it this way, you know, at the end of this engagement or at the end of this mentor relationship, we want our entrepreneurs to be able to insert goal here, you know, launch their new website, increase the revenue by 10%, develop a new product line. Um, and you all can help me by, you know, and then offer clarity on, you know, what it is, you know, you can offer clarity on the marketing strategy, connecting me to a B2B growth expert, um, make an intro to someone who has funds. Um, for my market expansion, you know, it'll be crucial to have these conversations about how you want the mentors to engage, how you want them to have conversations, how you want them to handle conflicts, um, how you want them to support their entrepreneurs. Um, and having this in place from the front end is a best practice to ensure the best possible outcomes. Um, so, for example, um, we have an alumni, her name is Nicola, and she has a company called Copa Row. Um, we gave her these tools to use for her mentor as well. So we communicate these, these goals and these desired expectations to our mentors, but also to our entrepreneurs. And so, you know, Nicola sent over a list beforehand or before every meeting that she had, um, what she was currently working on. She was considerate of the mentor's time. She sent over the meeting link and really all the, the mentor really needed to do was show up and use his brain because all the logistics were set up. And now that mentor is on her company's board and they still have weekly recurring meetings. And so it's really, again, kind of you have to relinquish that control and telling and saying that, you know, I did my best to prepare both parties to engage with this um, and allow them to take the rein and kind of see what happens out of it. But I also think that conflict resolution is um, very key because that can be, you know, for me, I, I don't shy away from conflict. I think that conflict is the only way through. Some people are very conflict averse and, um, you know, one bad conversation, one awkward moment with the mentor. And it's like, no, I don't think I want to continue meeting. And you kind of have to coach again, your, your community and even the mentors do what that experience is, because as an entrepreneur, you're always going to have really tough conversations. And why not practice that? You know, if you don't see it eye to eye with your mentor about what they're telling you, you can communicate that in a respectful way and in a, uh, you know, an outright way saying, you know, no, thank you. You know, I don't necessarily think I'm going to use that, but I appreciate your advice on that. How about we talk about this aspect of my business or this is where I want to talk about actually, and this is what I've been working on. So clear and desired outcomes. Um, you also have to provide value to your mentor. So make sure you're always improving and iterating on your processes or your, um, your program. So keep mentors informed of opportunities through newsletters and information seminars, um, training seminars, facilitate introductions and connections within your mentor networks, you know, so mentors love meeting other mentors as well. So, you know, they can, they can share skills, they can network with each other. Um, if you have opportunities outside of the key organizational programs that you have, um, be sure to share them with your network. So be a resource or a place for mentors to find other enjoyable experiences or opportunities for them to share their skills. Um, so having them come to you outside of just, you know, having them volunteer their time, but hey, Steve Spot's doing this really cool thing. I think I could lend my skills to this. Oh, I think me and my friend or me and my coworker would love to do this together. You know, be a place for them that they come to. Um, and then lastly, follow up with your mentors after engagements, um, get their feedback and infuse it into the work that you're doing. Because again, mentors love to hear and see that you're taking the words that they're sharing and the wisdom that they're giving, that you're, in, in, you're implementing that into the work that you're doing. Um, and they love to see that you're listening to them and care about their opinions. So here's an exa another example. So that mentor that I was talking about um, with, with um, Nicola, this is her mentor, Centauri. Um, and Centauri is actually not on our board. So I think it's also another kind of, um, like another drop of wisdom is that if you sustain these relationships, you know, mentors are doing a lot of cool things. There's a reason why you wanted them in your network and why you wanted them to support your entrepreneurs, but don't just see them as kind of a one trick pony, um, you know, cross pollinate and share much of the work um, that the mentors conduct in the nine to fives. Oftentimes doubly serves as content for, you know, your accelerated program or the work that you're doing. Um, so for example, 
Centauri published an article sharing his insights about mentorship and, you know, he name dropped Seedspot in there a couple of times. So of course we shared it on our platforms and, um, you know, you can do that with the other work of the mentors that you're working with as well, because it shows that you're invested in them, their business and the work that they're putting their time into as well. Um, and actually, and I'm gonna do, I'm gonna copy this. And if you all wanna check it out, I would love for you all to, to give Centauri some views on his article here. Shameless plug, I know, I know. But yeah, I mean, it's it's really as simple as that. You really just have to make people feel included and you know feel like they're a part of what you're doing. Um, and so these are some things that we've done at SeatSpot. So um, we know the importance of mentorship um, for the success of entrepreneurs in general, but how do we take steps within our own organizations and our own practices to ensure we are both removing as many barriers as possible, um, and especially as it pertains to founders of color. So um, we did some polling for our community. Um, we asked our entrepreneurs some of the things um, that they're struggling with and some of the common barriers to entrepreneurship are, as you can see below. So, you know, lack of information, access to capital, um, access to networks, lack of confidence, habits, and based on these, on these, um, these barriers, I think many of these can be aided through mentorship um, and through democratizing your access to your networks and your resources as well. So essentially less gatekeeping, for, for instance. So um, to counteract all of these barriers, we provide many alumni resources. Um, we include um, our mentor network. You know, we have a community Slack channel. We have resources um, and discounted deals that we give. And again, essentially um, less gatekeeping. So this platform is all on, on, online. And so our alumni have a password that we provide to them um, after they complete a program and they can really just go in there to the center and do whatever they need or get, or get the resources that they need to kind of keep pushing them forward. So our national mentor network, you know, so composed of over 40, 450 um, diverse leaders um, from some of these many great companies. Um, typically they meet for a one-to-one -one basis. Um, you know, support um, based on the specific content needs that we have. But these mentors also represent many of the same underrepresented communities that our entrepreneurs are from. So we're always very, um, are always very conscious about that as well, about where we're sourcing. If we have too many, um, too many identities represented, I'll just say represented like that. I'll just say it like that. Um, we, we're always intentional, making sure that we're paying the people in our programs with people who could support them and share their backgrounds. But we also have um, part of our mentor program is um, partnerships with other organizations and consulting firms such as Booz Allen Hamilton, Ernst & Young. Um, and we've partnered with these organizations for more specific skills-based mentors to support our entrepreneurs. So we make sure to train all of our mentors so that they understand the communities that we serve and that there aren't any surprises. And our curriculum um, reviews, you know, our seat spot program model, the structure, um, the entrepreneur personas that we typically have in our cohorts, um, the mentor-mentee relationship um, expectations, as I shared earlier, and then goal setting, planning, and communication strategies. Because many of these um, mentors are our volunteers may may have mentored in the past, but aren't necessarily always focused on what um, entrepreneur mentorship looks like and kind of how that's a slightly different thing, you know, mentoring a youth or mentoring a family member or things like that. Um, so this is our alumni resource center. So I just took a couple of snapshots, um, but this is essentially um, giving our alumni free reign of the many negotiated and discounted deals that we have, the service providers, the additional programming that we provide. Um, whenever they have access or whenever they want access to it. So um, if we don't provide a certain service or resource, we also provide another opportunity for them to reach out to us and let, let us know what they need. And we do our best to go out there and se secure those resources. So, you know, if it's another proto prototyping service, if it's um, marketing service, if it's, you know, another pro bono legal provider, um, we do our best to go out there and support um, our, our entrepreneurs and give them access to the networks that we have access to, or maybe, maybe being out being able to go out there and make asks of other partners or organizations that maybe they couldn't on their own. Um, and then this is kind of my favorite thing. So we have a mentor directory. So we have all those different people 
Uh, but it's 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 it sounds all great and fancy. But if we can't visually see who's in the network, if we can't see their skills, who they are, it really doesn't mean much to the entrepreneurs. And so for me, um, this is one of my favorite resources that we offer. So all of our mentors have or all of the mentors that are in this directory have self-identified and self-selected that, hey, I want to be in this public list. Um, feel free to send this off to your alumni. Um, and they can reach out to me or you can reach out to me, Chris, and set up the connection. And so um, this is just another great way to kind of democratize, you know, um, the access that you have um, in your networks. And it's another great platform for those entrepreneurs to go in and have some agency and what they need and kind of what you were talking about, Greg. Um, some people think they know what they need and some people don't necessarily always, but once they see a, a key phrase or, you know, hey, I need software development, or hey, I need B2B, B2C, they can kind of go in and kind of make choices for themselves. And I think this is probably one of the best um, ways we've shifted how to kind of support our founders of color, because a lot of times you just don't know what you don't know until you kind of go in there and see um, and allows you to think what, what fits your needs and takes the bias out as well of kind of the gatekeeping and kind of what I might think would be a good pair or a good mentor match, maybe that mentee doesn't. And so um, they can kind of go in and make a self-selection for themselves. Hey, hey Chris. Yeah. A uh, question on that. Um, what platform do you use? One and two, um, is it, it it's viewable to members, alumni, and staff only, or is it yeah. externally viewable too? Yeah. So this is Airtable. Um, Airtable. So okay. Airtable is a really great resource um, project management tool, um, but I used it to kind of display um, all of the different types of mentors that we have um, in our network and. This is password protected for our uh, alumni. So, excuse me. Once they've kind of gone through our programs, um, completed all of their objectives, they can come and reach out to me, and then I send them this link, and they can go in, let me know who's who's of um, interest of them, of, of, to them, and then I can I do my best to you know reach out to those mentors, see if they have time, tell them what the entrepreneur is looking for, and then make that pairing for them. Um, and sometimes you know the mentors are saying you know just have them reach out to me give them my email and I'll take it from there too. So it, it also gives you some flexibility in how you make those pairings and those connections. Um, Thank you. I just, yeah, of course. I just put this in here just to kind of show you how I thought about when we built our directly, what that looks like. So um, I don't like to categorize human beings specifically, but I would say categorizing their skills and the areas in which they work is helpful for the entrepreneurs because you know, we know that our mentors can be helpful in different facets and you know, maybe they work at an IT company, but maybe they've had marketing experience in their past or have a law degree that they're not using. So making sure that you're able to kind of you know, cross, um, you know, put the skills that the mentors have in a way that's digestible for the entrepreneurs that again, some are very early stage. Um, so use, use accessible language and things that they understand, and then they can kind of continue to learn on their journey um, what these skills and areas of strength that these mentors have too. So um, you can take a screenshot of this if you want, but this is just kind of how I break down some of the things that we use in our mentor directory. Hey Chris, just a question. So is, is it usually only available to the, the grads? Like we've, we've debated, um, you know, is this something we should share publicly? And we have mentors who want to be, you know, they want to build their business and we have other ones that don't really want public inquiries. How do mm -hmm. you guys think about that? Yeah, so definitely only available to um, graduates of the program. Um, I would say um, we don't kind of like dangle access to the Alumni Resource Center um, in front of the entrepreneurs, but we have a, an annual, you know, alumni survey that we have um, people fill out so we can track progress. We are a nonprofit, so it's important that we know what what work is being done and what impact has been created. Um, but yes, I would I would recommend only giving this access to the people that you're serving, or you know, if you're working with a partnered organization or another ecosystem or community, you know, granting them access if you know as a as a perk of sorts. So you know, we oftentimes offer our mentors to other um, accelerators or other types of entrepreneurial thinking bodies of people. So, you know, corporate entities or employees that want some mentorship as well. And so I think that's another way to strike off um, strategic partnerships too. 
Um, and then sorry, one more question then. Uh, yeah. Kind of segueing off that is 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 um, ty types of kind of these partners that are also mentors. Um, you mentioned corporate, right? Um, mm -hmm. I I was kind of following another accelerator that I guess um, I understand has kind of the, the the corporate partners who pay essentially to be mentors pay pay, pay the organization as as a sponsor to be mm. participate in the mentor program. Just wondering if you've seen that much in the accelerator world, and if that tends to create other uh, tends to create challenges, or if it works or if you've seen it work. Got you. So you're saying that the corporate entity or that human being pays to be a mentor in the accelerator network? Yeah, I mean, I think they view it as access, you know, especially with uh, when you're talking about entrepreneurs, uh, they see it as access either to early, you know, um, er early, early stage um, deal flow or mm -hmm. they see maybe they they have a um, a a product that the corporate to sell something that they would like you know gotcha. entrepreneurs to be using or something like that and so they see this as a kind of a you know um, a good source of 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 either new business development or new investments mm -hmm. for themselves and so they are more than happy to be sponsors of a cohort or the accelerator overall um to to have that kind of access um, Got you. and wondered just wondered about that i haven't model. yeah i i haven't myself personally seen that model specifically i know that you know for the corporate or organizations that we work with we have um some some great advocates and ambassadors in high places in some of these you know corporate entities like booz allen and ernst young and they um you know, as a foundation have given us, you know, donations to support work with them, you know, so for instance, of helping, helping support, you know, some Booz Allen employees or consultants start to think how they can start working with early stage entrepreneurs a little bit better. Um, and so that's kind of the give and take there. But a lot of times what I've seen in our mentor network is completely volunteer based. Um, so just the opportunities to, to, like you said, put them in front of early stage entrepreneurs or give them access to deal flow is is of value but even in our mentor agreements in our training we make it clear that we don't we don't have any sharks in our network we're not we're not giving you access to these men to these um alumni or these entrepreneurs just so you can kind of steal them up and kind of you know take them for a deal and so that's very clear um and we're very very diligent about that as well so um i think the challenge is sometimes is with a volunteer-based network you know, sometimes people don't always have the time on their time on their hands to to give back or give their time. And so, you know, um, some honorarium or some dollars might aid in their ability to kind of show up. Um, but we also I think that's why we ventured out into partnered organizations, too, that are looking to kind of talk with mentors. And that could be another place to um, potentially get some honorarium if, you know, you get paid to kind of help with an engagement or uh, a program like that, too. So. That's what I've seen in the past, but don't don't quote me on it. I have a Very quick helpful. question. Oh, sorry. <clears throat> I have a quick question if you have time. Yeah, go ahead. So I'm curious if you're seeing or if you're encouraging any kind of innovation in this space. Obviously, you know, you've identified a number of problems and issues. Um, and it seems as though uh, it's a it's a ripe conversation for some new solutions. I'm just curious if, if there are any of those kinds of hackathon type uh, uh, initiatives in place that you could speak to. I'm sorry, I, I think I missed the, the very beginning of the question. Oh, sorry. Um, and I'm, I'm in a loud environment too. I apologize for <laughs> all of the sirens and such. Um, I was asking if you're aware of any sort of innovations in this space that are helping to solve the problems that you've highlighted today. Um, I, I, I'm just aware of how you can get smart people in a room <clears throat> from different perspectives and figure out some unique solutions. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe some of them tech-based, maybe some of them human-based, maybe some combination of that. And I'm just curious if you're aware of any initiatives of uh, of that sort that are underway or mm -hmm. if you would be interested in something like that 
Um, I'm definitely interested in those types of innovations, but I can't speak candidly that I've seen it done from like a technological standpoint. Um, I've seen um, there's a company called the Mentor Method, and I think they kind of what they do is kind of assist with mentorship and kind of sustaining those relationships and making sure that those relationships are strong. But I think it's more on a, a um, mentorship for like corporate bodies or corporate employees. But in terms of kind of mentor relationships between entrepreneurs and kind of providing more democratized access, what I've seen is just um, different, different methods um, from different accelerators, but kind of with the same goals in mind is just making sure that the entrepreneurs or the communities that we're serving have access um, without, you know, much human involvement so that people can get in when they need to and that it's not, you know, get, gate kept by us or anybody and that the bias is kind of stripped out. So um, unfortunately, I don't think I can speak to it, but I would love to, maybe we can set up a call after and we can chat a little bit deeper about it too. I'd love to. Thank you so much. Of course, of course. Um, so I'm running short on time, but I just want to wrap up really quick. So one of the last things that we've done is essentially um, provide access um, to you know other alumni as well. So Seed Spot, we focus on entrepreneurs who are at that idea stage, all the way up to you know Seed Stage, Series A, people who are getting investment. And I think it's super valuable for entrepreneurs who are just getting it, their skin into the game. I guess um, to just see what other entrepreneurs have been up to that aren't necessarily a um, they are a men they're mentoring them, but they're not necessarily a mentor relationship that we're kind of pairing them with. Um, so kind of learning from those around you, uh, you know how they talk about managing up, but kind of, you know, working with the network that you have surrounding you and people who've been in those same shoes and kind of getting access to them has been super valuable for entrepreneurs that we served. Um, we have a community Slack channel as well. So the community, um, as you can see to the right, has different channels where people can kind of make ask, they can give, they can announce their wins. If they're fundraising, you know, there's different um, identity based cohorts and, and um, you know, channels in there so they can feel and kind of get that support from their peers. Um, and then we also have, you know, monthly peer support groups. So we have this ran by an alumni who um, just kind of makes space for our seed spot alumni to just chat with each other, talk about what they're going through, let off some steam. And, you know, in this virtual environment, I noticed that people really just want to just want to talk and just want to not necessarily be heard, but necessarily just, um, you know, get things off their chest with a community of people who understand exactly what they're going through. Um, and so making space for that, I think also provides um, another opportunity for us to boost up that confidence and kind of mitigate the fear that comes with being an early stage entrepreneur as well. So um, this is my call to action to you all. I don't know how you'll go about it, um, and I know, again, for short on time, I won't make time here, but what's one thing you think you'll do over the next couple of weeks to strengthen your mentor network? Um, think about how you, how you will go about it. And if there's anything maybe that you picked up from this, this, um, this chat um, and see if you can implement it. And I'm happy to make myself a resource as well. And we can talk through kind of, again, some more things that I maybe haven't mentioned here and approaches that I've taken to kind of reinvigorate our mentor network or support those um, those entrepreneurial communities that we're serving. Um, but yeah, this is my one call to you all. It's just try to be intentional about what you're gonna do in the next two weeks and just maybe try it out with maybe securing one new mentor or um, maybe shifting the relationship between a mentor and a mentee that you have right now. Um, but other than that, that's that's really all I have for you all. I know I asked, answered some questions throughout the presentation, but if there are any other lingering questions, I would love to answer them for you. And again, if, ta if time doesn't allow, I'll give my, uh, my contact information in the chat right now. Um, and then we can go from there too. So thank you all so much. Chris, this has been uh, incredibly valuable. Thank you. First of all, thank you very much. This really <laughs> helps me think about how to totally restructure our mentor program. Um, so, so thank you. Uh, I, I guess the, the one big open question for me is, you know, time on both sides, right? Like our, our entrepreneurs are busy, our mentors are busy. Um, in our program, we we require them to do like weekly coaching with our kind of our program directors and our mentors. I don't know if that's the same in your program, but I guess I'm just curious, like the way that you guys run it, um, are the entrepreneurs also meeting with program staff once a week? And and if so, what what is the 
sort of expected time commitment with a primary mentor versus a supplemental mentor? Mm -hmm. Like I know some programs do like 30 minutes once a week, some do like, you know, just once or twice. Like how do you guys handle yep. that? Look at it. With yeah. So um, I'll speak from our impact accelerator program, which is kind of like our keynote program um, for, so for the six weeks um, I make the pairings with the, um, the entrepreneurs and the mentors, but those entrepreneurs are paired with one or two mentors for the entirety of those six weeks. And so they're seen as kind of the key resource um, for them. And they're expected to meet at least weekly um, and at least for, you know, 30, 45 to an hour. Um, and so I make sure that, you know, I'm sending out the curriculum. I'm sending out um, any questions or curiosities that they may have um, at the top of the week to support our mentors with the curriculum that we have. Um, and that's kind of the, ex the bare minimum expectation there. Um, but they're also throughout the program in terms of, you know, in involvement with program staff. We have office hours weekly that um, we host at the same time every week that these these entrepreneurs can come in and ask us questions about if they want to practice their pitch, if they're having struggles with their mentor, if there's anything else that they want to, you know, just sit down and chat with us about, we make ourselves available. But we also have three um, pitch, pitch events. So we call them Venture Thursday, and this is an opportunity for other mentors in our network to kind of assist these entrepreneurs with their pitch. And so we give them opportunities to, to essentially give them like 10, 15 minutes to own the room, talk about what they're working on. And then from there, um, yeah, they have, they have the opportunity to you know, build relationships with those mentors too. So I would say making, making sure that they have a home-based mentor, someone to go back to, but we also sprinkle interactions with different seat spot staff and different mentors throughout the programs too. Cool, that's super helpful, thank you. Of course. Well, thanks, Greg. Um, looks like you're the last one here. So <laughs> uh, it's been my pleasure. Wait. Can I, can I just to toss one of their, their idea? I was talking to um, one of our entrepreneurs who went through another accelerator. And one of the things they did in addition to having like a primary mentor is they said um, for like kind of this skill specific Google, they said, I uh, did this thing where um, every two weeks they were like, here's the mentors that are available if you want to do like office hours. Mm -hmm. um, have you ever seen anything like that? Like, I'm just trying to think about different yeah. approaches. Yeah, so like we have mentors who... Um have offered up their time and like have created specific Calendly links or Zoom links and say, hey, I'm going to be available or on this call every week. Feel free to send this out to your entrepreneurs and let them know that yeah. I'm a resource to them. Um, you know, for the different weeks that we have throughout the six week program, there's different curriculum sessions. And so even on those office hours that we provide, sometimes we bring in our mentors who have assistance, you know, if, if the week we're talking about financials and sales, we'll invite some mentors to those office hours where they can sit and kind of meet one-to-one -one with entrepreneurs who are just struggling and want to have a little bit more hand-to-hand, -hand, you know, kind of conversations there. And so I think you yeah. can't, you can never iterate too much. And I think um, at least providing the opportunity is always valuable. Cool. Yeah. Thank you so much, man. This is wonderful. Of course, man. Um, I appreciate your showing up and the questions. I love that. Um, so I guess I'll stop chatting, but it's uh, it's been a pleasure, Colin. Thank you so much. I know everyone else had to jump, but hopefully, um, Greg, hopefully I chat with you soon and you as well, Colin. Yes, thank you, Chris. Thanks for being here today. Uh, thank you, Greg, and to everyone else who attended or is watching the recording. Uh, there will, Greg, for your reference, be a um, recap sent out early next week. Um, if you did want the chat log, you can touch base with me. I can get that to you because that won't be in the, uh, the recap email itself. Uh, but otherwise, thanks again, Chris. Um, thanks for being here and for sharing your expertise. It's been it's been a great afternoon. Thank you so much. You all take care. Thank you.